Hello guys and welcome back. This is the second of a two-part video about global longitudinal strain. Make sure to watch the first video before starting with this one. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate more practically how to obtain the global longitudinal strain. Thank you for all your support and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to like this video. So let's start. Let's review some basic parameters. The left ventricular wall can be subdivided into several layers. The ventricular wall consists of an inner lining called the endocardium, a thick muscle layer called the myocardium, and an outer lining called the epicardium. Muscle fibers adjacent to the endocardium are longitudinally oriented, which results in longitudinal shortening, as you can see in figure A. Figure B are the muscle fibers in the middle layer, and these ones are oriented circularly around the short axis. Contraction in this muscle layer results in radial shortening, meaning that the diameter of the ventricular cavity decreases. And the muscle fibers adjacent to the epicardium are oriented approximately 60 degrees in relation to the fibers of the mid wall. Contraction in this layer results in a twisting motion of the entire ventricle. The basal segments are twisted clockwise and the apex is twisted counterclockwise. This twisting contraction is called circumferential shortening, as you can see in figure C. Strain is the rate of deformation. Global longitudinal strain is defined as the deformation of the myocardium. This means what we are really looking for is the change in length from base to apex during the cardiac cycle. Longitudinal strain is the rate of longitudinal deformation. In essence, global longitudinal strain is a direct measurement of myocardial changes used to characterize left ventricular systolic function in clinical practice. Longitudinal strain is the most frequent type of strain, but we also can estimate the rate of regional deformation and the rate of circumferential or radial deformation. Before we start to practice, I want to show you some normal strain values. For global longitudinal strain, for global circumferential strain, and for global regional strain. And here, you can see the normal left ventricular strain values according to vendor's specific equipment and software. It's very important to know which machine are you using before reporting a value as normal. So let's start with the main purpose of this video. Teach you how to obtain global longitudinal strain. First and the most basic is you will need these three views. You will need a good quality apical for chamber view, a good quality apical to chamber view, and a good quality apical to chamber view. Make sure to acquire all these three views and all the segments are included. You won't need anything else, so just make sure to zoom in the left ventricle. 
The process is very similar in every echo machine, however, for the purpose of this video I'm going to be using the GE Vivid E95. Once you have your images, press the measure button and select the AFI option from the measurement package. Once you click the AFI button, the artificial intelligence from the software will automatically recognize and select the view. The software selected this view and if we follow the red arrow, we can see that the machine is recognizing that is the apical tree chamber view. Don't worry if you don't have this software because you can do this manually. On the blue menu, on your right hand side, I'm showing you with red arrows where to click to select the view. In this case, just click apical tree chamber view. You have to do this with all the views. The idea is to select the views and recognize them before you can process any information. Now that you selected the view, the next step is to define the region of interest. Once again, the artificial intelligence will automatically track the left ventricular wall and the segments for you. If you think this tracking is accurate and you're happy with it, you can just click approve and select next. If you are not happy and you think the tracking is not accurate, don't worry because you can do this manually. Just by clicking the three click button, as I'm going to show you on the next slide. In this view on your left, you can see the artificial intelligence is not tracking very accurate the apex. So in this case, I'm going to click the three click button. At this point, you will have to define the region of interest manually. If you focus on the central picture, the software is telling you what to do and where to place the three clicks. The first click is at the basal posterior wall the second click is at the apex and the third click is at the basal septal wall. By clicking these three points, you are redefining the region of interest. Now, if you are happy with this new region of interest manually adjusted, just click process on the menu. By clicking process, you will obtain the three chamber longitudinal strain. Now, this is the longitudinal strain of just one view. If you want to obtain the global longitudinal strain, you have to do the same process on the rest of the views. To get the global longitudinal strain, you will need to obtain the longitudinal strain of all the three different views. The three chamber view, the two chamber view, and the four chamber view. Now let's do all the process two more times with the rest of the views. To continue to the next view, just click approve and next on the menu. Same process here. The artificial intelligence will automatically recognize the view. In this case, this is the apical two chamber view. Don't worry if you don't have this software because you can do it manually and select which view is this one on the menu. The software now will track the region of interest. If you're happy with this, you can leave it as it is. If not, 
Just remember that you can adjust the region of interest manually. If you decide to adjust the region of interest manually by doing three clicks, now the software is going to expect you to click the inferior basal segment, second click on the apex, and third click on the basal anterior segment. Once you are happy with your tracking, just click process and now you are going to obtain the two chamber longitudinal strain. Remember that in order to obtain the global longitudinal strain and getting the bullseye, you will need to do the same with all three apical views. If you are happy with this, just click approve and select next. Two done and one more to go. Let's do this one more time. One more time, the artificial intelligence will automatically recognize the view and select the region of interest. It doesn't matter if the software do this automatically. It's always good practice to check if you have the correct view and also to check that the region of interest is being tracked appropriately. Remember, if you are not happy with something, you can always adjust it manually. And once you are happy, just click the process button on the menu. All the softwares are very similar and basically they guide you across the whole process. Now we have the four chamber longitudinal strain and this is the last bit we needed to get the global longitudinal strain and the bullseye. As you can see, it's very easy. Here is a summary of the protocol. First, obtain your basal views, apical two chamber, four chamber and three chamber views. Then, just select the correct view and the region of interest. Use the blue menu on your right hand side to manually adjust anything if you're not happy. Once you process and approve your selections, you will obtain the longitudinal strain of that view. Do the same with all three apical views and you will obtain the global longitudinal strain and the bullseye. Remember, the more you do this, the easier it will be. It's all about practice. Now that you are confident with the first menu, let's have a look at the summary menu. After supplying all the data, you can navigate across the results menu. This allows you to review all your results. For example, if you click the bullseye only button, you can analyze the bullseyes segment by segment. Also, click the ejection fraction button and you can analyze the ejection fraction and volumes. If you click quad, you will get four pictures to analyze the strain. If you click bullseye plus review, you will get your bullseye and a review of all the views. What I want you to do is just to click every button, just navigate across the summary menu, just to get to know your software. Click single to analyze one single view or click review to analyze and compare different data. Get used to the software, get used to the menu, just click on everything. I think the idea is just to get familiarized with the software. Once you have your global longitudinal strain, 
On the summary menu, you will see this button called myocardial work. The myocardial work is a new echocardiography based diagnostic tool which allows to quantify left ventricular performance. If you are intrigued by this new measurement, all you need to do is click myocardial work and just add the blood pressure. Well, enough chatting. Next, I'm going to show you a video of me calculating global longitudinal strain live. I hope this video can answer most of your questions. And before we start, let's have a look one more time at the summary. Let's start with the apical four chamber view. Press the menu button and click AFI. Now select the correct view, in this case the apical four chamber view. And because I'm not happy with the automatic tracking, I'm going to adjust it manually by pressing three clicks. The software now guides you to click the septal base, the lateral base and the apex. If you're happy with this new region of interest, just click process. Now you get the longitudinal strain of the apical four chamber view. Click single to analyze one single view. Click EF to obtain the ejection fraction, diastolic and systolic volumes of the apical four chamber view. To continue, click approve and select next. Once again, select the correct view, in this case, apical to chamber view. Now, I'm happy with the tracking, you can either click process or don't do anything, will automatically process. Same again, you will get the longitudinal strain of the apical to chamber view. Click single to analyze one single image or click EF to obtain the biplane ejection fraction and biplane diastolic and systolic volumes. If you are ready, just click Approve and select Next to go to the last view. Our last view is the apical three chamber view, so just click the correct one on the menu. If you are happy with the automatic tracking of the region of interest, just click Process. You will get the longitudinal strain of the apical three chamber view. If you are not happy with the result, you can click Reprocess and do it again. It's good to know that you can always go back. Now the menu is different and because you did the same in all three apical views, you are able to get more information. Click Bullseye only to analyze your bullseye and to check your global longitudinal strain and the strain of all the three apical views. Click across your summary menu to analyze your results, check your bullseye, your traces, and you can also review every single apical view. If you're not happy with something, you can always go back. At this point, you can calculate the myocardial work. If you're happy with all the measurements, just click approve and exit. Remember to always save your results. This is the end of the demonstration. I hope you really enjoyed this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. So see you on another time. Bye!